Welcome to Mastara for an early video this week as my schedule is booked thanks to real life interference. This week we are looking at one of the most interesting traditions of the Trolladaran people of Karamikos, the shearing. This is when a child decides they want to be an adult and is formally kicked out of the family for a few years to learn a trade. When the child has learned enough that the family is pleased, they're accepted back into the fold and recognized as an adult. While originally just a Trolladaran custom, it has been accepted by the Thaetians living there as a great way to get rid of freeloading relatives. I'm Mr. Welch and it's time to grow up. The shearing is a major part of every Trolladaran teen's life, as it is the last step in their childhood before they're considered full adults. Every male child goes through with the shearing. It's not required of girls, but they can request it. A girl that undergoes the shearing is held in higher regard by her family than one that doesn't. The earliest age a child can undertake the shearing is 14, but if they haven't done it by the age of 19, the family will ask the boy to undertake the shearing. Being asked to undergo the shearing is considered a great embarrassment and causes people to view you as a freeloader. The ceremony itself is a somber occasion, involving most members of the extended family and even village elders are invited. A final dinner is held for the child, where the family talks about the child growing up and all the important events in his life. After the dinner, the child is then dressed in traveling clothes, including a cloak. The head of the family will then use shears to tear off the bottom of the cloak, leaving it ragged. Once sheared, the child is no longer considered part of the family, though they are still friendly. The child is expected to find their own way, learn a trade, or even take up adventuring until the family has decided that they've become adults. The Thaetian nobles at first thought this tradition was a curiosity until they started seeing the merit behind it. The nobles quickly adopted the traditions themselves, forcing their own children to make their own way in the world. While this is not legally required, it is heavily pushed on Thaetian children. Thaetians that want to be accepted by the Trolladaran subjects are expected to undergo the shearing when they're a teenager. Thaetian children that are on their shearing lose any noble status until they're accepted back. While attacking a child on their shearing is a heinous crime that usually ends in a lynch mob, noble children are still a priority target for bandits and slavers. A sheared child has numerous options to prove his worth, normally by taking up an apprenticeship or a trade. A few that have shown talents in the arcane or the martial skills can find employment in adventuring groups, and while that's one of the most hazardous professions possible, it's also the fastest way to return to the family. Many children go to tradesmen known to be looking for apprentices and return to the family once they've earned the rank of journeyman. Others take up professions nearby, such as farmhands or town guard. A few venture abroad, becoming sailors, or in the case of children living near the borders, finding work in Derekin, Thyatis, or even Yalarum. Life as a sheared child is difficult. They can't go back to their family for help. They have just the coins given to them by their parents. As their starting funds aren't much, it's important they find work early. Almost all children plan their shearing in advance, talking to the local merchants and tradesmen to find who is hiring before asking to be sheared. The local churches are another common source for children seeking work, as numerous clerics in the various temples were sheared children who decided to take up the mantle of the immortals. A major threat to sheared children is the Iron Ring, who considered children separated from their parents and looking for work easy prey. They keep note of upcoming shearings, as these are public knowledge and major events in smaller towns. Once the child is freed from the family, the slavers wait for the child to be isolated and then pounce. Many of the hounds that the Iron Ring used for cannon fodder were sheared children taken exactly in that manner. Towns that have been plagued by the slavers will often only let children travel in caravans for protection and forbid them from leaving on their own. The Iron Ring will try to entice the children to leave on their own, often trying to befriend them and give them gifts of gold and alcohol to gain their trust. A slaver caught trying to kidnap a child can only hope for a quick death, as despite what the Duke's law says, slavers have no rights at all when cornered by an angry mob. The slavers target Thaetian children more than any, as they can be ransomed back to their parents. Famously, Adriana Karamikos, daughter of Duke Stefan, was targeted for kidnapping during her shearing no less than three times by the Iron Ring. The first attempt was thwarted by the Ducal Guard, who was looking out for such an attempt. Adventurers stopped the second kidnapping in the brink of time. And during the last kidnapping attempt, the Iron Ring learned that Adriana had learned to take care of herself in her years as the town guard. After she defeated her kidnappers, Duke Stefan decided she was ready to become an adult and welcomed her back into the royal family. Conversely, her brother Justin served as a sailor on a merchantman and finished his shearing without interference. The end of the shearing is a momentous occasion for a family as their child has returned as an adult. Communication isn't forbidden between the family and the child during the shearing. In fact, it's quite common but the child is considered a family friend rather than a relative. As the child reports back on any progress during the time away, the family will begin planning to accept the child back once they feel the child has gained enough knowledge and experience to manage on their own. Once the child has earned his place in the eyes of the family, they will send a letter or a messenger to him letting him know that it's time to return once all of his duties are fulfilled. Usually this takes about two years to be invited back, but sometimes it takes longer. 
In rare cases, the child will disgrace the family name by turning to crime and will be dispossessed, forever cut off from their family. A sheared child returning to the family is met with a large party with all the members of the extended family invited, as well as friends and village elders. The now adult is expected to regale the crowd with tales of what happened during the time of way, of trades learned or adventures survived. Once the dinner is finished, the elder of the family takes the old cloak from the child, gives him a new cloak with the family seal on it. With this gift, the child is now an adult in the eyes of the family as well as the Trolladarn people. The other party guests will present gifts to the newest adult of the family so that he can start a life apart from them. Anyone who has completed a shearing is a full adult in the eyes of the law and is free to marry or even start a business. The shearing provides for a whole host of adventure hooks for players in Karamikos. Obviously, keeping slavers from kidnapping children is a time-honored plot, but there's also the case of children who want to tag along with the adventurers to learn a new trade. A young wizard who has just learned her first shield spell and wants to be the party wizard's apprentice will have to be closely guarded or let down easily. If the characters are in a long campaign, there's a good chance they will watch their own children go through the shearing and then have to remember they have to let the kids do it themselves and they can't help. Thus ends the shearing ceremony of Trolladara. It's a minor aspect of Mastara, but it's quite flavorful and gave the setting a memorable tradition that drew in players to the lore. It's the little things that make the settings good. It doesn't always have to be floating castles and epic level NPC cameos. Next week we are going for a deep dive into the past with ancient Nithia. The original Nithia, not the washed up remnants. But until then, remember when your dad tries to teach you to swim by throwing you into the lake, the first step is to get out of the bag.